All right. An important message to start off episode 28 of the Off and Beat podcast. Um, I just want to send a big fuck you to these cyclists out here who really think that's all about fucking you. You really want us to share the road. Well, you know what you should also share? Consideration. Fucking consideration. You need to understand something. You are dealing with 3,000 pound vehicles to your 90 pound swim bike and your 160 pound frame wearing a, a sweat swimsuit because you want to go down blind curves and expect everyone should stop what they're doing to accommodate you. When you put yourself in unnecessary, hey, 37 year old Craig, it's not happening. You're not qualifying for Olympic trials. You're not going to be Lance Armstrong clean or playing dirty. It's not happening. It's not my job to go 30 miles under the fucking speed limit to get behind you and to go around you and 50-50 chance to not get hit by a white Tahoe blind swiping me, fall into a ditch when that should be you down the ditch. It's funny how I can go around you, I could probably get hit, and somehow you'll be standing like, Oh, man, are you okay? It's like, hmm, I would be if you were the one that fucking got ran over. I'm all about getting your exercise in. I'll tell you what I'm not about. Exercising your... <clears throat> if you just want to get killed, if you want a way to... A cool way of suicide, but you don't want to deem suicide because you don't want to go out as a pussy to your kids. I get that. So you use this excuse to cycle, get in the way of everyone's way. You pick the worst times of the fucking day to want to get your sprint on. And if you are going to get in front of me, you better get in front of me. Obviously, I'm not going to sideswipe you, but I might give you the old taparoo and uh, hit you right on the sidewalk. Hopefully, there is a sidewalk for you to land on. Because you know what? Maybe next time, put your bike on the fucking sidewalk or get at least pretty far to the side but if you get too far to the side you go down the ditch hey if the f if you get on the far right side and if you make one small uh misjudgment and you fall down ditch you know what that's probably a sign of you probably shouldn't cycle down the road when there's 80 cars at five o'clock on a fucking friday to get in the way of that what kind of self-centered attitude do you have where you're just like Everyone should stop what they're doing, even though it's 99% of time men that are doing this cycling because they're trying to get away from their wife. Fine. I am sorry your wife hates you. Probably because you're wearing these tight spandex, exposing your below average dick that we can all see. I don't know. Oh, it's uh, actually the suit is to protect my ball sacks and to prevent chafing. Well, you know what? You could chafe these nuts when you fall and break your arm, and then you could go to rehab, physical rehab, and then you can see what it's really like to be in pain. You better hope you get killed if I hit you with my 3,000-pound Jeep. Now, let me, let me clarify. I'm not going out there and say, hey, just start hitting these dudes. But the ones that pick the worst times of days, to want to quote unquote train for some maybe peach tree uh, bike sprint thing they may do. I don't even know if they fucking do it. But get off your high horse. You were the equivalent of someone in line at a Publix at 5.30 p.m. on a Thursday. Line, uh, the lines are like 12 people in a line. You have 33 items, they scan all your items. But then a price on a can of tomato sauce is not exactly what you thought. So you're like, hold on. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. So you get your six-year-old son uh, Tanner, because there's always a fucking Tanner that is causing nuisances for no fucking reason. So you go to Tanner, return the can, and tell him to pick out another can. So you stop the whole line, and you rely on a six-year-old kid to get you the right fucking can. He comes back, gets you crushed tomatoes instead of pureed tomatoes. And then, oh, shit, got to send him back again. And you hold the line up for seven unnecessary minutes while everyone's got shit to do because you feel the world should stop for you. Go to fucking self-checkout. And for you people on bikes, go to your fucking gym and just cycle. Go buy a Peloton. Take it home. I know it's not the same thing. It's like running on a treadmill. Of course, run on, on normal. 
uh, concrete. But you know what you do when you want to go for a run? You probably go to a track. Or you run on the sidewalk outside. Or you run in the grass. You don't say, you don't test your fate with people going 50 miles per hour around blind curves. I should not have to go 15 miles per hour instead of 45 because you want to get your run in for the day. Go play some fucking basketball. There's other ways to condition your legs. You want to go out on a limb? You want to get your limbs strong? You know what? Go out on a limb. And you really are going out on a limb because you are lucky in the audacity that you use to share the road as a pinpoint to feel like, oh, you have the advantage of some of your life. Because for once, you could tell people, I matter too. It's like, oh, really? You matter? Hey, it's like if I go to the gym and try to bench press next to Phil Heath. Hey, guess what? We're not the same just because we're in the same place. We're in two different games, my friend. I know if I get under a 500-pound bench press, it's not going to end well. You and your 200-pound combined, that's with the bike included in the weight, compared to some 4,000-pound Suburban possibly hitting you, it's not going to end well for you. Protect yourself. We live in a world where you need to protect yourself because no one's going to do it for you. So there's no unnecessary reason to put your Sonic the Hedgehog looking fucking helmet thinking it's going to help if anything happens to you. Putting your glasses on when it's overcast, you piece of shit. And then you want to do it in light rain with your skinny tires are skinnier than your fucking ankles. What the hell's wrong with you? Who the fuck made your ego so goddamn high that you feel everyone in the world should stop for you? That's really what this cycling thing has turned into. You pick 5 o'clock on weekdays and Fridays. And when people are just trying to get the fuck home after a long day from work. And some people are starting to work. Hence me who drives for their job. And you have the fucking audacity to slow down commute. To slow down people getting to their destination for people doing their jobs at high rates because you want to get your 10 miles in? Go fuck yourself. And I mean that with all respect. Respectfully. Because as long as you put respectfully, it's all respect, right? Respectfully, if I had the choice, I would give you the old taparoo and you go down the hill and I would look down like, oh man. Let me know if you need help. I'll send someone for you. Because you need help beyond that. I am, I don't know what you think is going to happen. It's, look man, you're going through a midlife crisis. It is fine. You're trying to find different ways to stay in shape. Maybe it's better on your joints, it's fine. You know what's not great on your joints? When you fall in your arm because you slip and slide because... You're going around a blind curve, and next thing you know, someone's weaving over in a lane because people don't stay in their lanes. Ironically, stay in yours, the fucking sidewalk. Hey, and if there's not sidewalks in between the main road, there's your sign to not go down that fucking road. What the hell is wrong with you? Jesus fucking Christ. Ugh. Talk about not having enough struggle in your fucking life that you create unnecessary struggle that causes struggle on everyone else. This is not what your therapist meant when you said, you know, you need to create adversity in your life to truly accomplish your goals. Hey, don't create adversity to other people trying to avoid you and then they end up hurting themselves because you are a piece of shit, self-entitled, and the worst part is you know it, but since you take advantage of the rules, because no matter what, if you in a vehicle hit a hit a person on a bicycle, you are always in the wrong because we're supposed to share the road. I'm all about sharing the road. I'm a generous guy, but I want to share the road with people who actually want to share the road and actually know their place on the fucking road. I will avoid a turtle at all costs. I would rather avoid a turtle than avoiding you. What does that say? It means I run into a lot more problems with you than that turtle who's just trying to get to the stream down the river. While you, on the other hand, could have just biked around your neighborhood. Could just went to 
your local state park and bicycle and go up and down curvy hills. You know what? Where there's nothing getting in the way of you except Mother Nature. But you know what? This is the universe's way of telling you to go fuck yourself. If you get hit, your fault. It really is. I'm not advocating for you just to get hit, just to get hit. But let me just tell you from everyone, we are so fucking tired of catering to you. You really think that because you wear your spandex clothes, because you you are a bigger asshole than the person that held the sign of the Tour de France and 50 people fell and lost their placing in the race, broke some limbs. Some of them couldn't even continue to race because you made it all about you on TV. And that's all you're doing. You want to let your local neighborhood, you want to let local people that always drive there like, man, this guy's really getting that work in. I've seen him bike six times in the past two weeks. This guy's really serious. You know what? He's really getting over his divorce well. Ah, good for Craig. Nah. You know what? There's other ways to deal with your divorce that doesn't hinder with other people. And you're going through bad shit in your life. You know what you don't do? You don't put that burden on other people. I don't care to see you thrive in front of me. No. Thrive somewhere else. I can't. I can't thrive if you're getting in the way of me thriving. Hence, I hope. You probably, look, if you were able to pay 250 bucks for that sweaty track suit with your Sonic a Hedgehog fucking looking helmet, you probably can afford medical insurance. And you know what? Good for you. Because I understand cycling is not necessarily a, a cheap sport. You have to get equipment, you know, you have to, you know. You, you can't just start cycling when you weigh 260 pounds and you're 50 pounds overweight. Like, no, you have to get down to a certain point before you get on these streets and navigate. It takes great balance. It takes great discipline. I respect that. The issue is you, it's too late for you. And not only is it too late, you're interfering with everyone else's ability to thrive. It is the most psycho. You guys are fucking psychos. And more importantly, douchebags. Because the audacity is, you be the type of people, and you be getting in the way of other people. People honk the horn at you, and you look at them like, what are you honking at me for? I have the same right to be here as you. It's like, no, you don't. You know what? Technically, you're right. You do have the same right to be here. But you know what? You're going to get treated like everyone else that has the right to be here. You want to truly be like everyone else? When you fuck up on the road, when you cut me off, I'm going to let you know about it. Except you better make sure you have noise cancellation because I'm going to honk the shit out of you. And you better hope you have noise cancellation because I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself over and over and over again. And you know what those noise cancellation headphones aren't going to do for you? Which it audacity for you to wear noise canceling headphones in the middle of the fucking day. While you're quote unquote driving, you want to share the road when it's technically illegal to wear noise canceling headphones while you're driving for obvious reasons why it would be unsafe to not hear stuff while you're driving. I digress. But the point is, you better make sure you have injury prevention pa shoulder pads. Because unlike a vehicle, the car hits me, there's airbags. It's not great, but you know what? There's the comfort of me being my car. I have a much better chance of surviving if someone sideswipes me at 50 miles per hour than if you get sideswiped and they're going 30 miles per hour. I have a much better chance of surviving, buddy. You want to truly feel that inner pain? You want to feel all the gain of putting yourself through this hardship? Huh? You want to really feel the pain? How about when you go to physical rehab when I sideswipe you on the sidewalk where you belong? And let's see. Hmm. You want to feel pain? Go through rehab on your shoulder for seven months. Then you then you could talk to me about really uh testing your threshold of pain. Hmm. You think uh you think having sore hamstrings, you think having very tight calves, you think sweating out your core, you think starving yourself to stay on this small ass little fucking tricycle that you that's like the size of a kid's one at Walmart, you really think you think, huh? You really think you're the shit? Well, you know what? You're going to be just like a dead animal on the sidewalk. 
Except no one's going to go over there and cry about it. They're going to be like, ah, look at this fucking douchebag and his fucking wannabe Speedo. It's like a Speedo version of a fucking bicycle that you are. You're just basically a Speedo on a bicycle. It's not a compliment, buddy. Not a compliment. And you better hope he don't die with the Speedo on. Otherwise, it's all going to be revealed. And I hope on your death report. I don't hope you die, but if it happens, I'm not going to feel a whole lot of sympathy for you. There's a difference between someone riding their bicycle for transportation, like in the inner city, or even transportation to get from place to place. When you know what? They follow the rules of the road. If you're in inner New York City, you know what? At the very least, you have crosswalking signs that tell you when to cross. They have sidewalks where you can go on a bicycle. Or even, not even in inner cities, even in regular neighborhoods, suburban areas. There are places for you to transportate riding your bicycle safely. You know why? Because it's for your protection. Even though you're protected by the law, there's no fucking protection. If you die, it's over for you, bud. And could you imagine how embarrassing it would be for your family to get fucking a uh, death what is it like where if you die in your will and you get death support and you get a payout because you were trying to sprint cycle? The the difference between you and the guy that's just trying to get to work or get to school every day is yours is completely unnecessary and you pick the worst times when people are always frustrated. When they go through a work day, they're just trying to get home, relax, crack a beer, do some coke, relax. And they're just trying to get home without losing their shit. Because they dealt with their da boss David all day. And here you are, giving them one more fucking reason to dislike their job. To dislike their day. They're just trying to get home. Maybe, unlike you, they're trying to see their wife that they actually love. Maybe they're trying to see their kids, the ones that you can only see once a month. Hey, maybe you should bicycle to their uh, to their graduation, one you're probably not invited to because they're too embarrassed to see their dad because you probably would show up. Eh, I'm really getting into this. Oh, God. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Oh, man. Oh. And people are just trying to get home, trying to go home and relax. And what do you do? Give them one more reason not to relax. Just one more reason. Just one more reason. Could you imagine if some guy just got laid off at his job that day? He's going home thinking, how am I going to break? Ah, how am I going to pay for this mortgage? How am I going to do this? Jesus Christ, what are we going to do? And then, you know what he has to deal with on the way home? On a two-lane road where it's nothing but ditches. So there's no, ah, just go around. Because if he goes around in a very troubling area, hey, uh, he's a goner. Because you can't see what's ahead. If you can't see what's ahead, and people behind you don't have the opportunity to go around you, be fucking considerate. But if dude's just trying to get home, rough day, trying to figure out what they're going to do, how are they going to survive the next couple months, and then they get behind someone like you, who's like, Mua. you basically have that Timon and Pumbaa. Hey, I think I saw this meme where it was like Timon and Pumbaa. Hey, have you just tried not fucking thinking about it? That's basically you on a cycle. To everyone else, hey, I don't know why you're mad. Have you just tried not thinking about going 30 miles per hour under where you would usually go? This nuisance I've created, I'm basically a roadblock getting in the way for no legal reason. Just because I can. And there's nothing anyone can do to stop me. Because I can. It's like so. It's like a house squatter. You just take advantage of the rules, even though everyone agrees that it's complete bullshit. Honestly, you guys should start getting tickets. I'm sorry. If you should legitimately be able to get pulled over, like someone who's speeding, like if you can't go relatively speed limit, which I would understand that's pretty unrealistic for someone to go uphill at 30 miles per hour. I get that. That's unrealistic. But there's your sign that you should probably not go down that road or up that road. No pun intended, but all intended. The issue is you. And the fact 
you are going to get in front of the wrong person one day. And they are not going to give a fuck that you're trying to stay in shape. That you're trying to keep a healthy mind. That you're trying to, you know, get your leg strength back. They're not going to care that you recover from cancer. You know why? Because you're causing them stress. You're causing them unnecessary anger. You're causing road rage. Except the difference between when two people are racing in road rage and when people are honking at each other, the difference is they can be kind of on equal footing. I can speed past you, show whose dick is bigger. The issue is I can literally see your dick. It's not bigger. And on top of that, uh, if we in a race... It's over. You can't hawk your horn. You can give me the middle finger, but then you know what? I'm going to give you the middle side of my Jeep and uh, give you a little nudge. Except my nudge on you is going to be different than your nudge on me. What are you going to do? Hit my fucking other mirror off? Oh, God, I can't see off both sides. But guess what? You can't see off both sides of your eyes anymore because I hit you off. You hit a tree. Boom. Right through your eyes, these branches. And guess what? You're going to branch off. And then guess what you can't do the rest of your life? Cycle. Oh, that's going to be a cycle you don't want to deal with internally, buddy. It is not. And on top of that, so back to this scenario where some dude that just got laid off at his job is just trying to get the fuck home. Trying to see his wife break the news. Go through this plan of how are we going to get through this. And then here you are. It's like, hey. Look at me. Look how impressive I am. Going 12 miles up this hill. <laughs> Wearing my fucking, like, shoes that are smaller than half of my foot. Because you think you're so fucking cool, huh? Guess what? That dude that's having a rough day. I don't care how control of your emotions you are as a man. When uh, the livelihood of your family is at stake, there's no... There's nothing that you can even imagine what a man will do out of anger. When he feels he has failed or he's failed, he's about to put his family in a very troubling position. And you're responsible for putting that man through a more troubling position. All because what? You wanted your rotations per minute to get up to 3,000 for a day? Hmm? You want to make sure you get your heart rate up on your little Apple watch? Hey, well, I hope you're eating the Apple while you watch yourself rolling down the hill. Fucking. That man just trying to get home. Blow off some steam in a normal way. Maybe he goes home trying to punch the, you know, punch the home boxing uh, bag. One he hasn't probably used in three months. But you know what? If he loses his shit before he gets there, you might be that punching bag. Except his fists in this scenario... Is the front of his car. Might give you the old, old taparoo. Except there's going to be nothing happy. Nothing happy at all. Sorry for the brief pause. The freaking audio jack fell out. But don't worry. We're back, baby. We are back. Anyways, you fucking asshole. Ah, <sighs> Jesus. If you want to be, look, if you want to cycle, you want to get on cycles, fine. Get on some steroid cycles. Get on some testosterone. TRT. Do what you got to do. Get on some trend. But you know what? Don't take it out on us. We're just trying to go about our day. And you're getting in the way. You're not that goddamn important. And I really think it stems from this, to be serious about it, these assholes that are on this I really think it stems from this idea that they really think that the world should stop for their quote-unquote uh, ambition, their goals. It's like, hey, you know what? When Olympic athletes train, you know what they don't do? They're not sitting there lifting, doing snatches in the, at the front of the Walmart. They're not. They're not going in front of Panera Bread. Doing some split squats. You don't see uh, freaking bodybuilders go in front of a McDonald's. The drive They don't stop the drive through to get their uh, pull downs. They don't pull up a pull up bar in front of a Mexican restaurant to stop service. You don't stop what everyone else is doing because you want to quote unquote achieve your goals. 
You know what you do? You go to a secluded place where everyone else is doing the same thing, and it's a safe space where everyone's on the same page. Hey, this is a normal place to do some sumo squats. This is a normal place to do some back squats. This is a normal place to do an elliptical. You don't stop. Someone don't pull out an elliptical off the back of their truck at a left turn lane and just start, hey, guys, sorry to interfere, but I'm getting my quad motions in. Huh. Someone's going to get out, get a fucking, like, jackhammer and just pwn that shit because you were a fucking nuisance. Go home. Do it in your front yard. Do it in your garage. If you were going to actually bicycle outside, go to locations where you're not interfering. Go to a public park. Go to just a local park. Just bicycle around your neighborhood. It's much easier in safe, even if there's not sidewalks, but in secluded neighborhoods when people are already going at slower speeds, speed limit in normal neighborhoods is like 25 miles per hour. Ah, hey, People can see when someone's bicycling. You try to stay on the right side. People gradually go around you and they might give you the wave. Like, hey, man, keep up the good work. I see you. But you know what? Driving in a neighborhood and driving on some very dangerous street near industrial places and commercial businesses deserves a big fuck you. I don't, I don't understand why this is actually a difficult thing. I'm sorry if I sound like a fucking asshole, but I think 98% of people on this earth agree. I think even people, we, there's a bunch of people that probably has that friend that does this shit. And they probably respect them for staying in shape, but they're like, dude. Because it's almost like you're doing it because you want all these attention from hundreds of thousands of strangers that are passing by you. Are you just an attention whore? If there was no one on these streets, I guarantee it. 90% of these people wouldn't be cycling in the middle of traffic. They'd be like, ah, what's the fun in this? They probably wouldn't even fucking do it. And the ones that would still do it, those are the real ones that are committed. And I will respect psychos that are committed no matter what. They don't care about the outside tension. They would do it for free. I don't think a lot of you want to do it for free. I think a lot of you want to do it for attention, to feel important, to feel like people are actually navigating themselves around you and what you want to do. I wouldn't say your feelings because it's not really your feeling, but I'm pretty sure you uh, I'm pretty sure you feel this weird uh, jump and like, yeah, you go around me, motherfucker. I'm going to stop this shit. You think you're going about your day thinking you're that important? No, I'm important. Me on this 90-pound fucking Cadillac bike. I'm the one that's fucking important. I'm better than you. It's a sense of I'm better than you. You are not. Let me let me break the news to you, motherfuckers. You are not. Not only are you not better, I am going to think differently of you. And if I have a prior opinion of you before, I don't care if I think of you the highest regards. I don't care if Gandhi were to come back to life and start riding on a bicycle. You know what? All the great things he did, eh, peace, nah, fuck you. Nah, you can uh, do your peace on the side, away from me. I don't think it's that much to ask for. In consideration, you guys really need to take a look at yourself in the mirror. We always talk about being mindful of others. If you really are mindful of others, you wouldn't get in the way of others for no goddamn reason. You're not getting in the way of others to enhance their day or make themselves better. All you're doing is saying, look at me, look at me wearing this bright yellow and blue direct TV looking motherfucker. Fuck you. You look like a Long John Silver's ad on a fucking bicycle. You're basically a fish on bicycles with your fucking swimsuit. Oh, it's really good for sweat. And when I take it off, it's really good to dry. Yeah, yeah, whatever, man. At the least. Jesus. Talk about how like self-absorbed you think like and you could cross you could cross the sad part is you could, it's really you can cross references in a lot of ways you could say it's for a certain um oh ah, damn I didn't mean to go but like let's say like a certain sexual orientation communities that is it really that you want to feel 
equal or do you really just want to feel like you're built different? You want to feel like you're actually a superior group in some way when the whole idea is supposed to be for inclusiveness, but you want exclusive treatment, no matter how much um, it's unnecessary. It's like, no, everyone should be inclusive and no sexuality should be discriminated. You people on bicycles shouldn't be discriminated. But you also shouldn't be put at the top of the pecking order thinking you're above the masses. You're not. You're not. I understand that, oh, the person in the vehicle is always in the wrong because of the ram- the ramifications to make sure people behind wheels don't road rage against bicycles. That is very dangerous. That is. And I understand protecting the, the bicyclists. You know what? You know how you also protect the bicyclists? Say, hey, no biking zones. I know that kind of exists, but um, they're not really enforced. I think they're afraid to enforce it because then you're going to make videos about, oh, you're discriminating against the fact that I can't bicycle in the middle of a school zone when everyone's trying to pick up their kids and there's a line of 300 people. I'm just a 37-year-old guy just bicycling through a school zone. I'm not a creep at all. I have every right to do this any time of day. It's like, eh, why are you biking through the school zone when kid, when people are actually picking up the kids? You couldn't at least do it when the light's not flashing. It's only like a 45-minute ordeal. You have to bicycle when the school zones are actually happening. When school's getting out, you all someone want to bicycle through there? What the hell's wrong with you? You look like a pedophile. I'm just going to say it. It's going to be really hard to pick up some of these kids these days. But, you know, I understand you can't just, you know, typically if you're on a, if you're a bicycle like that, you're not exactly, uh, not exactly looking like Miles Garrett out here from a physical standpoint, but you're certainly fit. But I doubt you could pick up a kid with one fucking arm. I highly doubt it. I've seen you at the gym. You're doing 15 pound dumbbell curls. And I'm not talking about the warm up. Now, I'm not talking about for sets of 50 either. <sighs> Jesus. Tried out a new um, energy drink tonight called Ghost. It's basically like they actually have pre-workouts and stuff. But uh, we're sponsored by Ghost. Uh, Warhead Sour Watermelon Flavor. Get it at your local Quick Trip. Um, I'm really starting to feel like I have a war on my head from this. Because I'm just thinking if I were to bicycle, I, I kind of just want to do it one time just to feel like the biggest douchebag in the world. Because you know what? Of course, I'm never a douchebag. I take a lot of pride in not being a douchebag. But I want to know what it feels like to be a fucking douchebag. I'll tell you the day that happens, I know what I'm going to do to be the biggest douchebag in the world. I'm going to get one of those uh, elongated skinny tire bikes. I'm going to get my Sonic the Hedgehog uh, protective headgear. And I am going to get these tight little Long John Silver looking. It's really like the cover one I'm wearing now. There's a blue and yellow flannel. It's kind of like that. And I'm going to put a random advertisement. Like people think I'm actually sponsored or something. I should put AA. Oh, man, that one hits deep. Imagine being sponsored by AA. Huh, we know what you stand for. Or uh, I should say we know uh, we know what's close to you at heart. Could you imagine putting someone, having an AA sponsor for someone who's never struggled with any substances? <laughs> Jesus. They'd be like embracing Chick-fil-A, but you're trans. It's not a, it's kind of contradicting. But neither here nor there. Still going to eat the sandwiches, but they're going to limit your sauces. Oh, double dipping when it goes wrong. Man, I'm on fucking fire today. Because I am fucking still angry about this. And no, by the way, this did not happen today. It kind of just happens on a semi-regular basis. And every time it happens, it happens for like two fucking miles. Two miles that should take maybe four minutes based off the speed limit and people in front breaking, being careful and shit. It turns into 11 minutes. I actually counted it. It took 11 minutes for something that would usually take four minutes. And the only reason why 
it was dumbed down to 11 minutes this one time for the simple fact of this dude actually was courteous enough after two miles of being a complete inconsiderate fuck he pulled over into a turn lane in the neighborhood and we were all able to go for a little bit and i think the only reason why he turned over he pulled over is because he was checking his phone you shouldn't even have your fucking phone on you what are you gonna do that's basically Texting and driving on the phone while driving. You don't have Bluetooth. I don't care if it's in your fucking ears. If you have noise cancellation, shouldn't that mean you are not able to hear it? I know that's not what it means, but I'm just playing on the words. But whatever. Imagine knowing how much of a douchebag you are. So you get noise cancellation plugs literally in your ears so you can't hear anyone. Because you know how much of a douchebag you're about to be. Be fucking audacity jesus how do you get pussy at all really what girl wants to be behind that and they're like man i love how this man just takes charge by being a complete unlikable inconsiderate fuck when i get behind this man going up this hill i just love riding his ass pause i just love getting behind him and uh, treading lightly, all pun intended there. And I just love the way he just struggles up that hill. God, that just makes me want to fuck him. Oh, God. Man, a man that could wear that outfit and have that confidence is a huge turn on. Hmm. Confident or completely um, lack of good judgment is probably more of the term I would use. I could only imagine what rashes that puts on your body, especially if you're a fair-skinned fellow. I mean, I don't even know how much more I could talk about. I can't believe I've gone for 36 fucking minutes about these fucking cyclists. And I know I'm cussing a lot, but that's what happens when I genuinely... I was... See, like, the last video, when we are talking about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry winning an award, I wasn't that mad about it. I just thought it was more funny than anything and pretty ironic and shit. But this shit actually makes my blood boil. Like... If I were to make some tea, it would be like some uh, Illuminati drinking baby blood for eternal life type of tea. Because, man, I'm spilling all of it today, man. There's certain things that deserve for the world to hear. And I know I'm probably not the first person to ever rant about people and bicycles, you know, doing this shit for no fucking reason. I know I'm not the first. But, damn it. As many of us out here that could be outspoken about these issues that are actual real daily life, you need to put it out there. If you are afraid, just know, you know, it's like the saying of like lions and tigers, they're more afraid of you, even though they can actually, uh, they could kill you in a second than none of you. They're more afraid of you. It's like, are they? I get the mean, like, they see you, they freak out, they don't know what you're going to do, so they get a little they're more afraid of you. They're trying to escape the situation more than cause the situation. But, like, deep down, they know, like, I don't want to cause no problems. But I know I can fuck these humans up. They ain't shit. I would eat their bicep tendons like it's fucking chicken nuggets. No sauce necessary. No sauce. And I feel like that's, like, what us in vehicles are, like, with... Of fucking bicycles. We're more afraid of the potential situation that could cause. But we know we could fuck them up. We know we could send a message one time. A couple times. And maybe they'll get the message. But chances are. You would probably. Uh, I don't even know if you. I don't even know if you could go to jail. If you just like tap them. I mean if you completely kill someone. Or run someone over. That's a different animal. But. And by the way. I'm not saying, look, in all seriousness, like, I'm talking about people that just bicycle as a sport in the middle of traffic. I'm not talking about people that get hit when they're bicycling, just bicycling around, getting place to place, or just bicycling around for fun. I'm talking about the ones that take it as a sport. So don't take this and say that, oh, Clint, he's he's being a real douchebag because he's making fun of people getting hit on bicycles. It's like... No, I'm talking about the ones that probably, like, if we could if we could go in history, every person has gotten hit by while they're on a bicycle. If we could just replace, bring them back, the ones that have lost or ones that have been severely hurt, 
if we just go back in time and heal them and they actually have a second chance of life and these people are the ones that i'm not going to say kill but they get hurt they get a little bruise they get a little scabs on their elbows you know you know you learn you know maybe uh, think twice before you just um sprint in the middle of downtown of a city not even going to say the city but Kennesaw um next time you think about just sprinting in the middle while i have a green light and there's no there's no um legal path you have you didn't even look to see how the lights red maybe we'll go now like nah you saw it was green and then you waved at the four assholes going behind you Y'all look the fucking same. And y'all just go across. Now I'm just sitting there. And I just shake my head side to side. Like a disappointed mom. And she uh, finds out that her kid is a hitting woman. Like, man. I told you not to do what your dad's. But no. And also... You are setting a bad example for your kid. Now that I think about it, you're really a piece of shit. You are teaching your kid from a young age that, hey, care, don't care about being considerate of others. Because those small things translate to everything. It starts on the, it starts on the road on a bicycle. Then it enters into the grocery store. Then it enters into school. Then it enters into cafeterias. Then it enters into workplaces. Then it enters into when they go to events. It enters when they go to the club. And then you know what happens? They get their ass beat because they really think it's all about them. They think they can do no wrong. It sets this entitlement tone. And they go to these places. And then they get their ass punched by a linebacker on Georgia Southern at a bar. Because they feel like, whoa, hey. I can do what I want. I don't care what anyone else. I don't care about order of operations. I don't care about waiting in line. I don't care about holding people when it's not necessary. I don't care about being the center of the room. Nah. They think that they deserve all that. You know why? All because you, 37-year-old Craig, said, eh, fuck them. Do what you want, son. The world is yours. It's like, it is yours. But the world may take you out before you can take a hold of it. So, tread lightly, Craig. And Craig's son, Tanner. It's always a Craig and a Tanner. Jesus Christ. You tell that's a dynamic duo. You can tell they both hate their mother. Craig's probably the one teaching his son, hate your mother. She's a fucking cunt. And then he looks at you and he's like, that's my hero. This uh, guy in fucking spandex. We're not realizing, hey, dad, uh, maybe you should get, spend your time doing more quality things that may actually help you get off unemployment. Jesus. All right. I think I'm going to. Wheel this one in. <laughs> oh, pedals. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I just want to say one thing. And I believe it applies to cyclists. But it is funny when I see that you're built different type of people. Oh, really? Are You, you will be built different because you'll have a titanium rod in your fucking legs. The legs may be decapitated. You may be like Oscar Pistorius. Just, you know, don't, uh, you know, shoot your wife through a bathroom door. But, you know what? Un I mean, hey, but, but like, yeah. You know, I understand that he shot his wife and killed her through a bathroom door because she thought, because he thought she was an intruder. But you know what? He was a pioneer. Being a paralegic. Is a paralegic where you have no legs and he has the he's the blade runner? <sighs> Jesus. I know you think you're built different. But let me tell you. Cats also think they're built different until they get run over. They think they got them smug they think they got that smug on their face. 
They think that they can do no wrong. They think they can roam the streets. They have these little clans and abandoned houses. Yeah. Till fucking snakes and coyotes are... Gotcha, bitch. Us cars are the coyotes, bikers. You're built different. You have all that confidence. Until, uh... Until it gets real. Until someone actually challenges you to, you know, what's up? Keep it real with you. Then you can match toe to toe. Then we'll see what you're about. All right, guys, go follow the IG, like and subscribe to the vid. And uh, to all you cyclists, um, I guess until then, since I don't want to hit you, I'll just go fuck myself in the meantime. And, um, oh yeah, remember to suck some titties, even to you bicyclists out there. Even though I have a strong hate for you, I still hope you guys go suck some titties. And, uh, yeah, I have a great, great weekend. I don't know, I may post it Sunday, I may wait till Monday. I haven't decided yet. Either way, love the new camera angle, and, uh, yeah, have a great weekend, guys. Fucking bicyclists. You fucking bicyclists. Jeez.